Hello and welcome to this latest video in the series of OCR GCSE computer science videos. Hopefully this uh, opening slide makes it fairly clear that this lesson is looking at flow diagrams but also pseudocode, another way of designing algorithms and complex processes. This is uh, lesson number three. This is looking at pseudocode and flow diagrams. Where does that sit within our big picture? Well, uh, unit two is made up of five key sections, and this is early on in the first section. So 2.1 is all around algorithms, and this is the third lesson in that series. During this lesson, you're going to understand what a flow diagram is and what pseudocode is. You're going to be able to uh, write both of those and also take uh, either some code or a diagram written by somebody else and adapt that to, uh, to change what exactly what that algorithm does. Before we start, have a think around what you think those two phrases mean. Uh, pause the video at this point and have a quick look either on the internet or in your own brain. What do you think a flow diagram is and what do you think pseudocode is? So a flow diagram is a diagram, funnily enough, uh, defining the inputs, outputs, processes and sequence of a complex algorithm or system. Computer programs are normally far too complicated just to hit off and create from scratch. Uh, we normally need to think around some kind of design once we've undertaken our cornerstones of computational thinking. We looked in the first video in this series at what decomposition was, what abstraction was. We should have already undertaken those tasks on a problem uh, before we're ready to think about the design. A flow diagram is often then the first step in our design process. It uses six key symbols uh, at GCSE to define what is happening in a complex system, process or algorithm. A mildly humorous example, you can see within this one that there are different shapes, meaning different things. Arrows connecting up the symbols, so do you understand flow diagrams? If yes, move down one route. If no, move down another. A slightly more famous example, the friendship algorithm from the Big Bang Theory. Uh, place the phone call, is the person home? If yes, say, would you like to go for a meal? If no, leave message. You'll notice within that we've already used four different, uh, four different types of symbols. These are the six things that we need to know for the OCR uh, GCSE. We've got our basic line, our process, a subroutine, uh, the input and output block, a decision block, and a terminal. Now the terminal is easy, that always goes at the start and the end of any process that isn't a subroutine. At this point, pause this video and make some notes on those different symbols. You may wish to flick back to the friendship algorithm and see how those are utilised within that example. Okay, you can now open either Microsoft Publisher or any other uh, desktop publishing application. And I'd like you to create a flow diagram uh, for, a, for an everyday task, something like making a cup of tea, making a pizza, baking a cake. Uh, Publisher is great. There's also a brilliant website called draw.io, which will allow you to draw basic flow diagrams and connect those symbols together. Pause the video at this point and create at least one flow diagram using the uh, symbols from the previous slide. Here is a slightly more exam based uh, scenario. This is a question from the OCR sample paper. Look at the following flow diagram. What would be the username for Rebecca Ellis? And then number two, draw a flow diagram of your own for an updated process where the flow diagram checks the role of a person and if they are a teacher creates the username from the last three letters of their surname and the first two letters of their first name and if they are a student uses the first three letters of their first name and first two letters of their surname. Pause the video at this point, give that one a good go and the answers are coming up. 
Uh, number one, Reb L. Number two, uh, you're going to get a mark or two for the different inputs. Always put your inputs in place. If you aren't sure on how to do the rest of the question, you'll still get very, very simple marks for just putting the three inputs. You need some sort of check whether the uh, role is a student or a teacher. I've signified yes and no with green and red. I've then created the username by uh, with, with a couple of process blocks. And finally, I've output the username. I've then got my terminator at the start and the end. Pseudocode is then our next step in the design process. It is a code-like description of an algorithm which is not specific to any programming language. So we'd create our pseudocode once we have uh, finished our flow diagram and we've got that early part of the design process in place. Pseudocode is a method for beginning to plan out exactly how our code will, uh, will look but without following any specific programming language. It would be a mistake in your exam if you are asked for pseudocode to write Python code. That would not be correct. A fairly basic example on the left hand side and a more complex example on the right hand side. Get the burger order. If want fries equals yes, then order fries. You can clearly see that that is code-like without being Python. If I copied and pasted that into Python, it wouldn't work, but it is definitely code-like. Now, students often find pseudocode tough to learn because there are no strict rules. Um, as long as it makes sense and is code-like, then it classifies as pseudocode. However, since the launch of the original Computer Science GCSE, OCR have written their own version of pseudocode called the OCR exam reference language. Every question in the exam which is code based will be written in the OCR reference language. Unfortunately there is quite a lot of it and I'm going to flick through that over the next couple of slides. The good news is the vast majority is common sense so you don't really need to memorize much of this. Here is the first section of OCR uh, reference pseudocode. Uh, the basic operators here, these are ones you should all know, and or are not, equal to, less than, greater than, th those sorts of things. It may be you want to pause on this or any of the next couple of slides and make some notes. On this slide we again see some fairly basic concepts, how to write a comment, how to set a variable, inputs and outputs, and then how to cast to different data types. This is the only language that OCR will use in their exam. Here we see how to create various different loops, for loops, while loops and do while loops. Uh, if you can remember the for and the while loops, you will be well on your way to doing well. I haven't actually seen the do while loops used very regularly at all. A basic if statement and a switch statement. Again, the if statement is the important one there. They don't generally seem to use switch statements all that often. Look a little bit here looking at file handling and how we can look at substrings. If we, we were creating our uh, username creator program from the flow diagram section, you'd need to use the, the uh, substring function there to take the first three letters, for example. Uh, file handling comes up fairly regularly. Um, if an answer needs to be written to a text file, that is how it will look, and those were the, are the sorts of things you may need to be able to write. Uh, here we're looking at arrays and then subprograms, so functions and procedures. Now maybe you've not learnt that yet. Uh, this is one of those chicken and egg scenarios of do you learn the programming first or do you learn the design process first? If you haven't learnt what a function or a procedure is yet, uh, maybe you need to go on and look at that lesson and then come back to this once your programming is slightly more advanced. So you should now have a basic understanding of the OCR reference language. While I've gone through that fairly quickly, I'm hoping that you will have made some notes on that. And if you haven't, do go back and make some basic notes on the bits there you don't think you'd remember uh, naturally. 
pause this video at this point and I'd like you to create a pseudocode uh, design for the basic activity that you planned earlier on as part of the flow diagram section. We're now ready to take a look at an exam based uh, answer. On your screens you can now see a the final question from the OCR sample paper. It asks you to create a OCR uh, pseudocode reference language answer for the following flow diagram. It does say within the question you can answer that in a high level programming language if you like. Uh, I would like you please to do that in OCR reference language at this point. The mark scheme is on the next slide, so please pause the video at this point, give this one a go, and then check your answer in comparison to the mark scheme. And there is the mark scheme for that one. It is really important that we understand how to read the uh, mark schemes for different exam papers. These are all available on the OCR website. Uh, on the left hand side you've got the basic answer and where you get the different marks one mark per bullet point on the right hand side you've then got some guidance from uh, from OCR so here is your revision guide for this very very important topic if I was asking uh, or telling a student one thing that I think they needed to know to do well in this exam uh, flow diagrams and pseudocode are that at least 50% of the marks for your unit 2 exam is going to come from this topic. Make sure you know how to write flow diagrams and pseudocode and if you're not sure do go back and have another look through this lesson. As always if you have any questions please do post those either on Google Classroom or in the comment section below. Thank you very much.